And hello again. This journal is from 5-9, the first of that day. The Mayan day was 12 Jaguar. So let's find out what it has to say. Recall how you've heard that the Native Americans, though this is hard to sum up so many different cultures and tribes as one group, how they thought it quite odd that the white man believed he could own land. To them, in their culture, this was unheard of and even ridiculous. Their whole understanding, their reality, clashed with this idea. Now, it's easy enough to step back as we realize how, in this and any number of ways, their culture was superior to what Western culture brought in and imposed. That's not my point, though. What I want to share is that the new reality we're walking and working our way into now will seem just that strange in many ways. So, let's prepare for a shock. Be in heart here where the new reality won't be that strange at all. Let's expand our definition of self here before we go on. Take on your own native divinity. You are that. But it takes using our free will to make the claim. That's how we show our acceptance, how we take ownership of higher self, and how we take our power back. So if it's not strange to who we really are, then how is it strange? To whom is it strange? Are you aware that while here in 3D we have all created a rather false reality around ourselves? We have all sorts of ideas and customs that have very little to do with anything real in the Eastern sense, which means anything eternal or truly long-lasting. We have built up what amounts to a false identity and then believed that we were that. One of the symptoms of this is believing that we are the body or the mind. We must admit that we've all believed that or do still at some point in time. We were programmed that way. Of course you see this. It's not something we chose naturally. It's what and how we've been taught, both the overt lessons and the covert programming hidden beneath. So no self-blame or criticism at all. Lighten up on yourself. Believing that we're the body is the first step away from our connection with who and what we really are. What follows from that are many other symptoms of our false beliefs, such as the general fear of death. In your higher self, you just laugh at such an idea, but for the false self, oh, it's so real. It's your direct experience, as long as you hold so, such beliefs. They support it. They make it seem real. Fear of being harmed also flows from wrong belief as self is the body or the mind. So many challenging things flow from that first false belief. Since the body and mind can be manipulated, can get ill and have unpleasant things happen to them, once we identify with them, we think these things can happen to the self. A higher self knows this is not at all possible, that it's even a bit ridiculous, but how in touch are we with our own higher or inner self? Almost every other false belief can be traced back to this one, claiming self as the body or the mind. While that might sound terrible, it's actually rather empowering if you choose to see it that way. It means that you can cut off at the pass, as it were, all those other false beliefs just by abandoning the one on which they all rely. 
that you are the body or the mind. How will this feel? Not so hot at times. It will feel like you've had the carpet pulled right out from under your feet. You'll feel off balance and out of whack, very uncomfortable. What I suggest, though, is to just keep reaffirming the real, the highest identity you feel you can claim, and keep raising it higher and higher as you can. This will have the effect of giving you an adequate distance from the old belief so that you'll be able to more calmly observe what is going on there as the false identity begins to die away. That's what is really happening to many, maybe to most of us. But most don't quite see it this way, and so there's some unnecessary suffering going on. For those wedded to the life based in mind, I haven't much help to offer. Mind will go off on all sorts of tangents around these things, none of which are worth, excuse me, a rat's ass. This is the best time to turn and walk away from the mind. Let it do what it likes. That doesn't mean you must stay around to listen to the nonsense. You can get back into heart. For those who have or who can find their way into heart, this additional distance you can get while you're claiming your real identity in the face of the false one you've created here below will be mightily useful. It'll help. You see, the false identity, which some call the ego, I don't, it has to die. That is, if you're ascending into the higher planes, then there's no way that anything false is making the trip. So it has to go, like it or not. And somehow it seems to know this, and so it rebels. It doesn't want to die. It's been having a good time here. It's not at all pleased with your new developments up into this thing that it just can't identify with, the higher self. To the lower self, it's the higher self that is false, that is a myth, that just can't be real. It has nothing at all in its experience that supports there being any such thing. So, you've got some choices to make, and you're making them every day. A day doesn't go by in which any number of the choices you make doesn't influence the outcome of ascension. It's happening even now incrementally. Yes, did you think that incrementalism was something owned by the powers that were, just by their wide use of it? Oh no, great things occur that way too, but as bits and parts over time. Well, that's the 3D perspective of it. According to heart and higher self, all time is just now. So there's none of this past, present, future stuff. To higher self, that just doesn't make any sense. Again, to get closer to sensing, to experiencing that, listen to people's NDE tales. Most of them got a taste of it, and some are pretty good at sharing that. Putting it into words, it isn't easy. The words are never good enough. They don't transfer the real experience. Still, if you're in heart, then you can pick it up directly. We're all one, remember? Besides, you yourself are there as well. It's only the body that's limited or bounded by time and space. You are not that and you are not limited in that way. Keep expanding out into the divine identity, the one with no limits. Keep claiming that for your true reality, even if it seems very strange. It only seems strange to mind. You'll see that one day. 
your inner tuition will show you in such a way that it just clicks. Then you'll know. It's mind that gets frustrated with these thing, things that gets even angry that it can't seem to get it. Well, of course it can't. That's real and it isn't real. It has no place in eternity like you do. Mind will bitch, gripe, and moan. Mind is very good at feeling sorry for itself. It will even throw tantrums. And the sooner you get some distance by recognizing and claiming your true higher identity, the sooner you get at least some relief from mind's antics. It's dying, remember? We have a real situation of death we're going through here. It's just not the death of the body or the real self. It's the death of the false sense of identity, the false beliefs, that whole structure. Mind, the 3D ba brain-based variety, is a part of the whole false creation. As demonstrated in just about every NDE, we are whole and complete even absent body and brain. They just are not who we are. They're what we use, not who we are. The quicker and more deeply we're able to accept that, the better we'll feel. It's not that the dying part will stop. You wouldn't want it to anyway. That still goes on. It's that you've got or are getting sufficient distance from it that it doesn't hurt so much or in quite the same way. It's not so intense. You may even seem like a benevolent, loving parent to the mind at some point, watching it go through what you realize in higher self is necessary and thoroughly beneficial but it will never seem so to mind. I don't know about this stuff from reading or watching videos. I know because I'm going through it myself and it's darn hard many times and you've seen me in the midst of that. But when I was in the depths of the depression, the pain was, oh, back when I was in the depths of the depression, the pain was most intense. I look at that now and can see how the pain's intensity is proportional to how much we've identified with that which is dying, the false self, the phony front, the part we're playing in the play. So we've all identified with our parts here one way or another to one depth or another. No one gets off scot-free. and. This dying is the price we have to pay for ascension. Now, that's actually a funny way to look at it, since ascension is quite free. It's just the natural effect of our rising in frequency. And who is there who will be paying this price? And to whom? So, it's not the best perspective to take. Still, to the false self, it will seem as if this is a price that it's being forced to pay for something it doesn't want. Overall, this is a very uncomfortable time and stage for mind to be going through. It helps, though, to know that your brethren are going through it, even sort of right there with you, at least during the same time. We're definitely all in this together to a greater extent than mind is able to conceive, since we are the one. The main thing that I want to share here is that the new consciousness, the new world, so to speak, will at first seem very strange, and we're likely to feel unsure of ourselves, and that's fine. I'm finding it best to be both aware of the egos dying on the one hand, and how the new world is just strange to the ego or to the mind. That's who and what thinks it's so bizarre, not the real me. Claim and keep claiming your own native divinity. 
Be stubborn and determined about that. If you'll just be in heart, this is that much easier there where you have an inner knowing that can take over from mind. Mind has done its part, my friends. Now it's over. There's just no more need for that where we're going. We have higher senses and faculties that are awakening to the extent we make room for them. Are you making room? Are you allowing things to be and feel strange? Or are you running away from any such thing? Remember, it's always not just a choice, but a seemingly infinite chain of choices we're making. And these all make the difference. And these make all the difference. You get to choose. And not to make a choice is also a choice. It's a choice to say, no, I don't think I'm ready for that. As we keep anchoring in heart, which is fearless, such choices are easier to make. There will still be pain, however. As far as I can tell, that's just built in as the balance for pleasure here in 3D. It's not like it's even anything different from that pleasure. Look to the thermometer. It has a top where temperatures are high and a bottom where they are not. So, both hot and cold are the same thing. They are just different ranges of the very same thing. So it is with pain and pleasure. They have different areas on the same scale. They need to be in balance for the best overall ride. And sure, the highs are fun sometimes, but I found that the equally intense lows are the price that's paid. It all balances out. We can't choose only pleasure. It just doesn't work like that. The sooner we see and know this, the better. For that's when we'll stop fighting things and just let them be. How good are you at letting things be? If you're good at not resisting life, then you are totally on the right track. That's the fruit or the proof of it, allowing life to bring what it will into your now, and it just doesn't matter. It is what it is, and fighting it brings nothing but eventual grief, grief which is not at all necessary. As we step into higher self, though, will be taking on the divine attributes, those which have no opposite, because they are not divided in any way. They are whole, these attributes, like perfect peace, perfect joy, wisdom, and love, all of them. You'll find they are your own attributes at some point, and you'll jump with startled amazement to recognize them there, right within you. Things we now think divine and out of reach will one day soon come to be seen, known, and experienced as the very real self, capital S. That to the ego, to the mind, is frankly shocking even unacceptable. They will come up with accusations of ignorance, lack of humility, and many such things. If you're in heart, and that's an important if, it's okay to ignore them. Remember, there's no judgment in heart. So if you're in judgment, then you're just not there. See you again soon.